I'm sure a lot of you have heard the term white fragility before, but what does white fragility even mean? There is a great definition of white fragility by professor and author Robin D'Angelo. And this is what she says is the definition of white fragility. She goes, it is a state in which even a minimum amount of racial stress becomes intolerable, triggering a range of defensive moves. So think about it this way. It's if you are in a situation where race or racism comes up either in conversations or on the news or in the media, and you immediately feel uncomfortable and you start to back up, that is white fragility. So now that we know what white fragility is, what causes white fragility? Well, the book Me and White Supremacy says that there is two main causes of white fragility. The first cause is a lack of exposure to conversations about race. So if in your day-to-day -day life, if you just don't experience a lot of conversations about race and racism, so basically it means that none of your conversations involve that topic at all, that can cause white fragility because you never talk about it. The second thing is having a lack of education on what white supremacy actually is. With me in this whole series called Yes, We Are Still Talking About Racism is my good friend, Joshua Duncan. Joshua is a counselor and he is the lead pastor at Center of Life Church. So Joshua, re regarding white fragility, mm -hmm. have you ever seen or witnessed white fragility in your life or ever been in a situation where you feel like white people stayed silent when they could have used their voices or their actions for good? So Sarah, uh, growing up in Sioux Falls, I was the only black kid to like the fourth grade. Mm -hmm. And my experience with white fragility would be that, and, and what I observed is kids not knowing how to really ask me questions about like, why does my hair feel different? Or even like on Martin Luther King Day, they always, uh, looked at me and then the questions of uh, of like understanding that time period um, and, and some people not wanting to. And then even with, you know, the George Floyd situation, just kind of watching some friends be silent or or people saying, oh, are you sure you want to, are you sure it's safe to go to the march and things like that? Um, just because of their fear, you know, and sometimes fear, as you talked about, the defenses that come up, fear oftentimes brings those defenses up. And so it keeps people silent because if I step out and say, what's gonna happen to me? Or, or is it gonna be twofold? Are my white friends not gonna like me? Or are my black friends going to, what are they gonna say? You know, so I think that feeds into that fragility. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think that white fragility is incredibly common, mm -hmm. even if people don't realize it. I mean, even myself, I tend to consider myself an extrovert mm -hmm. where I like to think I'm willing to speak up and speak out yeah. when it needs to happen. But something that I've noticed is that with all of the protests last year and the, um, the murders that happened, I definitely became silent in certain conversations or in certain areas. I think one reason was because there's a part of you that unknowingly does it, mm -hmm. but the bigger part is I had a fear of saying the wrong mm -hmm. thing and getting backlash because of that. And so I decided maybe it was best to not say anything at all, mm -hmm. but that's also not the right choice either, right. you know? And that's what white fragility is. So Joshua, since white fragility is so prevalent and can be so common, what would you say are just some helpful ways that we, especially as white women, could decrease white fragility so we can be more confident in speaking up about racism? Well, Sarah, you know, if you talk about something that's fragile, that means it's weak, it's mm -hmm. unstrengthened, it, it's frail. So then you're talking about what do I need to strengthen? I think it's a reflective question to say, in the area of knowledge, do I know enough about the history of African Americans to be able to empathize? Do I then presently, do I know the, the laws or things like that? So I think it's a reflective question to say, what area in my mind is it my own thoughts and how I think, knowing my own biases, knowing my, um, my way to communicate, what's the proper way to communicate? I think to figure out those areas that you need to strengthen and then you move away from being fragile to being strengthened. Then you can have a healthy conversation with um, your friends or coworkers, or just to be able to communicate on social media what you need to 
to be strengthened in those areas. Yeah, that is awesome. I love that. And you know, I'll tell you even for me personally, after reading books like Me mm-hmm. um, me and White Supremacy and listening to tons of podcasts, and I had a book club with some of my friends in Los Angeles where we mm-hmm. talked about racism every single month as the protests were happening. Um, I'm sorry, actually every single week, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I was having lots of conversations with friends. It made me realize what a lack of education I had mm-hmm. in all of these definitions and in racism as a whole. And if, if I personally hadn't gone through that journey, and we're all still going through this journey, yeah. Right? It's never going to end. But as you go through the journey of educating yourself and learning more, yep. it does help to decrease fragility. Otherwise, I would have never wanted to do this series yeah. about racism, you know? So I love that answer because I do think it can help so much overall. And so, ladies, your challenge this week is if you feel yourself getting uncomfortable when it comes to having conversations about racism, don't let the feeling of being uncomfortable win. Don't let being fragile win. Have the conversations, bring up the topics, because sometimes the most change for good can happen when we are uncomfortable. So embrace feeling uncomfortable to help decrease fragile so we can have more open conversations to help decrease racism overall. 